Oh, I just want to welcome uh, people online uh, and in this room where there are 40 people and how marvelous that is uh, for us, you know, after the all the changes we've been through over the past few years and to see kind of the heart of the actual physical people arriving at the Zendo and uh, welcoming our Shusa uh, to her uh, rite of pass passage, uh, which will take place this weekend. So it's wonderful to have you here. Hope you like our cobblestone uh, lane outside. Appreciate those of you who have joined us online. I see someone in Portugal. I see someone in Mexico City and other places that I don't know where you are. Um, we have uh, somebody from Germany who actually came in person. It's so lovely to have you here. Um, this is the last day of our intensive 90 day practice period. You know, twice a year, we set aside 90 days to practice deeply and to really come back because it, it's the lives that we all live is can be so distracting that it, it's wonderful to say I set aside this time I will you know and some of us say okay I'll sit an hour more during these 90 days than I do normally or I'll come, go to the Zendo or I'll log on and uh, be present uh, to the community and just finding small ways um, to, to be a part of things during these 90 days. Uh, and I hope they've been peaceful too, that you've had some rest and ease during these 90 days. So as you may know, and some of you may not know, uh, during that 90 days, uh, we always select a student uh, to lead us. It's usually someone who has studied koans for several years, many years, <laughs> and has uh, gone through uh, a kind of a rigorous uh, testing of their understanding uh, through time. Um, and uh, we call that person our shuso, our head teacher, head student. Um, and this year, our teacher is Sherilyn Posey, whose Dharma name is Yakuin, meaning perfect stillness. How <laughs> 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 oh, do you like to have that name, perfect stillness? <laughs> but in fact, it is what, what we seek in our practice, isn't it? That kind of stillness. And in fact, she's a precision watchmaker and a hospital chaplain. Well, what a combination. They're both very intimate and precise professions. Intimate and precise. It's really well with our study text, Dogen's Zenji's Uji, being time. Imagine the, the role of a watchmaker, the role of a chaplain, bearing witness to time. As a watchmaker, Yaku watches, observes, bears witness, to how time being is measured, how it is marked and observed. And as a chaplain, Yaquin witnesses intimately the times of human life, birth, death, sickness, youth, and old age. And in this fascicle that we're studying of Dogen's Uji, time being, Dogen examines the many, many different ways that we experience time in our lives. Time as passing, you 
you know, we were waiting for the jiki to ring the bell. <laughs> Time is passing slowly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, time has passed. Oh, that isn't the way we used to do it. Let's do it differently now. Time is future. Well, what if, if this is the way the Zendo is full today, what will it be like tomorrow? So yeah, uh, Dogen, just imagine him in early 13th century Japan, writing one copy of this piece. And later speaking it to one group at one time. While we now using electronic communications, share multiple copies, study together across time, across time zones, listen to recorded talks. Oh yeah, there was that talk last year I want to listen to, right? Startling changes in the time being from Dogen's times to ours. And yet the words of his fascicle speak to us today to the very time being that Dogen uses as a vehicle for understanding Dharma, for understanding life and death, for understanding the Buddha way. Here's what Dogen says about time. Do not think flowing is like the wind and rain moving from west to east. The entire world is not unchangeable is not immovable, it flows. Flowing is like spring. Spring with all its numerous aspects of call, are called flowing. <clears throat> when spring flows, there's nothing outside of spring. Study this in detail. Spring invariably flows through spring although flowing itself is not spring. Flowing occurs through spring. Thus flowing is completed at just this moment of spring. Examine this thoroughly coming and going. In your study of flowing, if you imagine the objective to be outside of yourself and that you flow and move through hundreds and thousands of worlds, for hundreds and thousands and myriads of ants, you have not devotedly studied the Buddha way. Oh, you know, we, it's so easy to flow along uh, with, with this wonderful translation by Kaz Tanhashi. Um, and uh, I can't imagine how uh, exactly how these images work in, in Japanese, in medieval Japanese. I mean, uh, those of us who think about Chaucer and how Chaucer wrote and how we in English now think about what he said and how we understand his, his writing. And when you think about it, we're reading Dogen through time and through uh, translation. So that allows an enormous amount of ambiguity which, you know, ambiguity becomes the opportunity for us to experience what he's saying as we need to hear it now. This is so marvelous. Uh, Dogen is coaching us, those of us who are here now, as it happens, most of us, I think with the exception of two participants who are below the equator, the rest of us are experiencing spring, uh, spring right now. And he's coaching us about how to experience spring. Spring doesn't happen through the idea of spring. My idea of spring is a sunny day, with beautiful blossoms, 
And to Ray, today it's raining like hell here. <laughs> and it's overcast. And still, it's spring. <laughs> so how do we understand spring through the juhoi, which is the critical word of, of Dylan's, meaning the dharma situation of spring? It's smell, and it's sound, it's taste, it's raininess. You, know, you can't say there's no rain in spring, otherwise we wouldn't have the beautiful blossoms. No separation. Everything dwells in its own dharma situation. It's juhoi, which is what uh, the, the Japanese call it. So it's about how time is circulating through us, through each one of us right now in this room and online, and anyone who watches this a year from now. <laughs> the time will be circulating through them at that time, through you at that time, you who will be here in a year. <laughs> Uh, so, to be intimate with spring is to be so close to spring that you breathe it in. You allow yourself to become spring, to allow yourself to be in this very moment of time. Oh. Isn't that the whole teaching of the fascicle? To be here now. So over and over throughout this verse, uh, Dogen uh, reminds us that time is constantly moving. We move, we're born. We live and we die. This is life as we understand it. He writes, mind is the moment of actualizing the fundamental point. Words are the moment of going beyond, unlocking the barrier. Arriving is the moment of casting off the body. Not arriving is a moment of being one with just this, while being free from just this. In this way, you must endeavor to actualize the time being. He wants us to be here. Mind is the moment of actualizing the fundamental point, which is when our mind is. Words are the moment of going beyond unlocking the barrier. He's not denying words, as so much of Zen does. He's bringing them in. Words can help us build our understanding and help us obliterate our understanding. This is what he does. Arriving is the moment of casting off the body. Not arriving is the moment of being one with just this while being free from this, just this. You've all experienced that today in, in your meditation, to be one with just this and free of it, of your ideas of it, your notions about it, just simply present moment to moment to moment. That, that's the key to freedom. That's why we practice, to be free. Even in death, Casting off the body, being one with completely present, even in death. We actualize in that way our time being. Bless you. In a Japanese internment camp uh, during the Second World War, on the California-Oregon border, a Japanese man wrote, 
ailing alongside the dying man, we both look at Marigold. So, okay, this is an internment camp where uh, we placed uh, Japanese people of Japanese descent, many of whom were born here in the United States, most of them on the West Coast, um, mainly farmers uh, and down the West Coast. And uh, during the Second World War, uh, we took all those people and put them in, in internment camps, in jails, outside in jails, uh, in the Southwest primarily. Uh, this is on the California Oregon border, huge, huge camp for uh, Japanese. And so this, this one man wrote his haiku, ailing alongside the dying man, we both look at Marigold. Marigold, such a beautiful, beautiful flower. Such a simple flower, it kind of grows wild really. The marigold and the dying man. And Dobin's meditation on time being Hovering in the background of Uji is always the question of life and death. And, you know, our Zen tradition faces death very squarely. I mean, we're not, we don't really make up these stories <laughs> that some traditions do, which are great. I mean, whatever you like. <laughs> But in our tradition, we don't we don't make up the, these fancy stories and have a lot of dancing and singing. Mostly, uh, most of us don't want to talk about death. But you know, in the Gospel of Thomas, uh, we read, first, you must find it. And when you find it, it troubles you. Troubling you then, you are astonished by it. First, you must find it. When you find it, it troubles you. Troubling you then, you are astonished by it. What is the teaching that can help us be astonished? Maybe it's like a story uh, from Koan, from Yunmen. I chose this little Koan because it's pithy. I thought that you would appreciate not sitting too long. <laughs> uh, and it also responds to this question of life and death. A monk asked Yunmen, how is it when the tree withers and the leaves fall? Young men said, body exposed in the golden wind. How is it when the tree withers and the leaves fall? Body exposed in the golden wind. Now that, that, rather than spring, this, this koan kind of is evoking uh, the sweetness of autumn, right? When things begin to wither and die. And this coin is also can be interpreted and understood and felt to be about the withering of the teachings of what we believe in. What's it like when we grow old, when we grow frail, when we die? Or what's it like when the teachings or our faith in the teachings withers up? and dies. Kind of scary, huh? I think that's what Dogen is asking us. What does time have to do with it? As Tina would say. <laughs> that was a joke about Tina Turner, for those of the rest of you who didn't know. It was just a little lightness here. 
<laughs> what does time have to do with it? <laughs> I think I, in my own experience, I, the young tend to be more frightened of aging than the old are. I think as we grow old, we, we kind of mellow a little bit um, as part of that process. And, and so the wrinkles and the sags uh, don't matter as much as we thought they would when we were younger. And uh, the aches and pains are, are far less than, than we fear. What is fear anyway? It's a feeling about an imagined future. Fear is fluttering in the chest, you know, the roiling the stomach. The sour taste of fear in the mouth. So we have this fear when we aren't yet dead. That's kind of weird. Fear is what we feel when we're alive. Once we're dead, we don't feel fear, as far as I know. I haven't <laughs> received complete reports on this, but. And I think doubt is the same. And you can see that the monk's question in the koan is arising from doubt. When the teachings wither and the practice falls, or when the practice fails me, I think it's also saying, how is it then? Another way to think about it is that when I experience absolute emptiness, how is it then? Ian Dogen says, your doubt also is the time being. You haven't ex escaped time being by thinking of this clever question. A doubting moment, a fearful moment, all moments are moments of being. So the monk asked him, well, well then how is it then? And the young man's response, you know, is just, I find it just shattering. It's so marvelous. It's body exposed in the golden wind. How is it then? Body exposed in the golden wind. Absolute presence. Not hiding at all from yourself. Not hiding at all from anything. Sounds like Dogen to me when he says in Uji, arriving is the moment of casting off the body. Not arriving is the moment of being at one with just this while being free from just this. Arriving is the moment of casting off the body. Not arriving is the moment of being one with just this while being free. Of just this. What body is he talking about? I think of my body, and then there's the body of reality. Are they two? What body is this that you're sitting with today? And what is this golden wind? Gold? Gold's the color of Buddha. Of course, that's Manjushri, that's not Buddha. I just think I can see Buddha in my mind's eye there, but gold is the color of Buddha, of value. Mm, from my Terrace window, I see that gold is the color of spring. Uh, blossoms everywhere. 
And the wind, what is that? The energy of change. What body is exposed through the wind? What body is shown or arrayed? Dogen says the way the self is arrayed is the form of the entire world. Talking about yourself, not a, a self, but yourself. Please do read Dogen intimately. He's talking to you. The way yourself arrays itself is the form of the entire world. Thus the self setting itself in array sees itself. This is the understanding that the self is time. It's so beautiful, so amazing. It's just like the uh, young men thundering at us, body exposed in the golden wind. You know, we have a display over there that was put together by Joran and Yugatsu. And it is, you may have noticed it, it is a, a, a repeating photographs of Sangha members who have passed. And it just, it kind of goes over and over. We have photographs. So we have to put Ryoko in there. Uh, yeah, and I appreciate it so much that I'm reminded so often uh, when I look there of, of our Sangha members that have passed. Uh, and who stayed with the practice. Uh, particularly during uh, the time of HIV AIDS, we had a lot of losses here. Uh, and I think of my dear friend, uh, who helped, really helped found this group, uh, was Genjin, Robert Genjin Savage. Uh, he loved to sit zazen. That was his main thing. He wasn't, you know, he did the services and he did all the, the koans and all that, but what he really loved was sitting. He's a musician, wonderful composer. Uh, and uh, even during, he had, well, during the pain and discomfort, uh, when he was very ill, in the final months, uh, he continued to sit continue to sit because it gave him such a joy, such a pleasure. And then finally, just at the very end, it felt like he just let it all burn away. Right? No longer striving for anything. Body exposed in the golden wind. It was quite beautiful. Yeah. And I've shared with many of you uh, that uh, when Sybil Yoshin Taylor passed, uh, who was a longtime member of the Sangha, long time, yep, in all kinds of ways. Um, she said, I'm in a canoe on the river of time. She said that the day she died. I was talking with her. I'm in a canoe. And then, then she said, okay, I'm going. And we waited and she said, I guess I'm not right yet. <laughs> she was like, it was just beautiful. It was just a beautiful letting go and still being present for what was called for. And I hope that gives you some confidence that your practice and your study of Uji can help you in those final days that we all face at some point. I would expect that our watchmaker, uh, Shuso, who was a chaplain, might urge us to pay attention, to pay attention to our practice, to pay attention to Dogen's teachings and to our very life. Let me uh, close with a verse. Um, spring now flowing around us, 
Let's enjoy the current. Swim along and sit strong. Find our way in this vast and amazing life. <laughs>